Hidden in this facility in San Diego, scientists are creating reactions hotter than the sun every 10 minutes. And thanks to my friend Anders Velander, I got to sneak in. So what's inside? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's talk about the D3D facility, the largest fusion reactor in the United States. In stars like our sun, light atomic nuclei, such as hydrogen atoms, combine to form heavier ones. This is known as fusion. It releases a tremendous amount of energy in the process. It's a fundamental reaction that powers the sun and other stars, providing light and heat for our solar system. On Earth, scientists are looking to replicate this process through controlled nuclear fusion, with the goal of producing clean, safe, and virtually limitless energy. The primary fuel for fusion, deuterium, which is a form of hydrogen, is abundant here. We can extract it from seawater and also tritium, another form of hydrogen, which can be made from lithium found in the Earth's crust. Unlike fission reactors, there's no nuclear waste. The only byproduct is helium, which we're running short of on Earth anyway. It's crucial for many things, including medical imaging, like MRI machines, and production of semiconductors. Besides, only a small amount of fuel is needed to release a massive amount of energy. Just one gram of deuterium-tritium fuel mixture in the process of nuclear fusion will produce 90,000 kilowatt hours of energy, or the equivalent of 11,000 kilograms of coal. And if you're worried about holding such immense energy in one place and wondering if it's actually safe, well, don't. Fusion reactors cannot sustain a runaway reaction. Seconds to core meltdown. If a problem occurs, the reaction simply stops. Shut down. Shut down reactors. This makes them inherently safe. Fusion energy just makes sense, but the challenge is how do we even create and maintain the extreme conditions required for fusion to occur? I mean, you literally need to recreate the sun on Earth. That's exactly what they're doing at the D3D National Fusion Facility in San Diego. D3D is a tokamak, a device that uses magnetic fields to confine plasma in a donut-shaped chamber. The plasma here reaches temperatures of up to 200 million degrees Celsius, 20 times hotter than the solar corona, the hottest part of the sun. On entry to the facility, we have to pick up and wear these little gadgets. These are dosimeters, and they're used to measure ionizing radiation exposure, because whilst the fusion reaction itself doesn't produce ionizing radiation, there are gamma rays and X-rays emitted by the plasma as excited electrons return to lower energy states. Fusion does, however, produce neutron radiation, which is also harmful to humans, causing damage to cells, tissues, and increases the risk of cancer. And then there's tritium, which is also slightly radioactive, so best to be careful. During my visit to the D3D, once all the experiments had finished for the day, me and Anders were able to see the tokamak itself, although we weren't able to go inside. It is technically possible to go inside. The tokamak stands at about four meters in height, so you can comfortably fit people inside. But unfortunately, this time it was vacuum pressurized, which prevents the plasma from interacting with air molecules, cooling it down and disrupting the fusion process. I just got to explore around and even below the experiment, but of course not without hard hats. I found this lovely cat wand to put on and we had to take even more care with the radiation monitoring. The areas surrounding the tokamak can be quite small, especially if you're tall. You're likely to hit your head on one of the many pipes overhead. Thankfully, I'm short enough to not have that problem. The main chamber of the tokamak is a vacuum chamber that they inject with the fuel of the fusion process, so deuterium or tritium gas. Electromagnetic waves such as radio or microwaves are then used to ionize this gas. These waves provide enough energy to strip the electrons from the gas atoms, creating a mixture of ions and free electrons. This is the initial state of the plasma. 
The main mechanics of a tokamak consist of three nested coil magnet systems. The toroidal coil is the outermost and it provides the main confining magnetic field. The coil is made up of 144 turns of copper, but even at its maximum strength, the magnetic field produced is just 2.2 Tesla. So it's nothing on our 19 Tesla beast at the University of Nottingham Physics Department basement. The toroidal magnetic field helps to keep the plasma particles on a stable path as they spiral around the torus. The ohmic heating coil is the central solenoid. As electric current is passed through it, it creates a secondary magnetic field directed along the poloidal direction, the short way around the torus. It's primarily used to induce a current in the plasma by rapidly changing the magnetic field and this heats the plasma through ohmic or resistive heating and also further ionizes the gas. This initial heating is crucial for getting the plasma to temperatures where additional heating methods can be effective. Together, the two field components result in a twisted magnetic field that confine the particles within the plasma. And then there's a third set of field coils, the 18 poloidal coils, perpendicular to the toroidal field, generates an outer poloidal field that shapes and positions the plasma to optimize performance and maintain its confinement. Now, the plasma is further heated through neutral beam injection. This is the main source of heating, actually. The D3D tokamak is equipped with eight neutral beam injectors. These inject high energy neutral atoms, which are usually deuterium, into the plasma. And when they collide with the plasma, they transfer energy over and heat it up. The neutral beam injection devices are massive. They're like huge submarines and you can inject at different angles to drive current in the plasma system. The neutral beams operate for five seconds with a total power of 20 megawatts. And this is equivalent to the power usage of approximately 17,500 average US households per hour but they're literally running this thing every 10 minutes. This combined with the fact that the coils carry huge electrical currents that heat up the coils means that there is a huge risk of overheating and damaging the epoxy used in the construction of the tokamak. The epoxy needs to remain below 65 degrees Celsius. So they cool them with water and that's what all the pipes are about. And even though the plasma is heated to 200 million degrees Celsius, the chamber is lined with carbon tiles that can withstand just 2000 degrees Celsius. Now the reason that this works and doesn't completely melt the entire machine is that firstly the plasma is not in direct contact with the tiles. It's held in place by the magnetic field. And since it's in a vacuum, there's nothing really to carry the heat between the plasma and the tiles. Now, secondly, the density of the plasma is really low. So even if there are particles that are hitting the tiles, there's not many of them. And lastly, the tokamak operates in a pulsed mode. This means that they can only actively hold a plasma stable for 10 seconds in duration. There's always a 10 minute break in between these pulses, allowing enough time for cooling in between pulses. Inside the control room, I was fortunate enough to catch the last experiment for the day. It was super fun to see everyone focused around the screens and watching the behavior of the plasma. We also got to see this cute little puppy who also had his own dosimeter. Unfortunately for this run, they were unable to hold the plasma. It's a race against time then to figure out why before the next plasma run happens in about 10 minutes time. Now the D3D tokamak isn't just an experiment for solving fusion power as evident from the many experiments happening here. For example, a few days before, a DIMES, short for Diverter Materials Evaluation System, enabled the insertion of a cometry sample into the vacuum chamber. This experiment was looking at the bioscience of comets in plasma, just as they would feel in the real universe. Similarly, you could use it to test heat shield materials for spacecraft re-entry. Hint, hint to Elon Musk, if you're watching, just stick Starship in a tokamak. D3D's success has also had substantial influence on the design of ITER, an international project which is currently underway in France. ITER has a central solenoid magnet that is five stories high, so it's massive. 
But unfortunately, due to delays, ITER isn't expected to reach full fusion until 2035. But that's good because it means more experiments here at D3D to prepare for this next generation fusion reactor. With this in mind, I'm sure one day, hopefully not so long away, we will have access to clean, safe and efficient energy. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Many thanks to my YouTube Perks members and even more thanks to D3D and Anders Velanda for making this video possible. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.